Our world seems to be facing a whole lot of chaos recently. But for the fourth straight night, protests are happening across the Quarantine, country. Quarantine, state of emergency. First sign of Kiev's descent. Thousands are now in makeshift camps. Any questions about the origins of COVID-19? Out of all of it, one thing has emerged as the crisis of our time that will affect all of us eventually. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction. For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. The science of it gets confusing and sometimes politics gets in the way, but the fact is our globe is warming. It's triggering unprecedented changes that could eventually see our homes become unlivable if we don't do anything about it. So we need to understand it. This is the first video in a crash course on climate. I speak to the experts to answer your questions. Today we start at the very beginning. What is climate change? How does it work? Where do we see it across our globe? And when did it become a crisis? Let's break it down. The science of how it all works isn't too hard to understand when you look at it on a graph. NASA tracked the carbon dioxide in our atmosphere over time. It is measured in parts per million. For hundreds of thousands of years, carbon dioxide in our atmosphere didn't pass this line at around 280 ppm. Since the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s, carbon dioxide did begin to pass that line. And in 2013, for the first time in history, our CO2 levels surpassed 400 ppm. The burning of fossil fuels isn't slowing down and neither are our CO2 emissions. Now, in 2021, our average CO2 levels have upped to about 419 ppm. And if we continue at this rate, we will see our CO2 levels rise to over 1,500 ppm in just a few centuries. I wanted to understand what these numbers mean and what exactly about them is so shocking. So I spoke to a climate expert, Dr. Andrew King from the University of Melbourne. What's really remarkable in the last um, 150 years is we've really increased carbon dioxide massively. We've increased it by about 50% in the atmosphere. Um, it's a huge spike. It's, it's much bigger than we've seen in many, many thousands of years in the past, hundreds of thousands of years. NASA calls it the relentless rise in CO2. What caused it? Relentless burning of fossil fuels to power our lives. As a species, we, we emit a lot of greenhouse gases. These gases get trapped with the heat from the sun within our Earth's atmosphere. That's the greenhouse effect, and it is what's making our globe warmer. In the last 150 years or so, our Earth's temperature has gotten a little over one degree hotter than what it was in the year 1800. And a little over one degree hotter might not sound that extreme, but Dr. King explains why it is. Even though a degree of global warming doesn't sound like very much, um, it's already having uh, pervasive effects around um, the world. And uh, we know it's gonna warm more than that um, in the coming decades it's going to keep warming. A little over one degree has been enough to cause devastation around the globe already. Our greenhouse gas emissions are increasing damaging extreme weather events that cause fatalities, cause poverty and cause lots of other damage to the environment and societally as well. Australia has felt it with the Black Summer bushfires in 2019. Our ocean ecosystems are feeling it too. Corals, for example, are very attuned to temperatures. In recent years, we've seen severe bleaching because the coral is so stressed from temperatures rising. Around the world, nations and cities have already been hit by unprecedented extreme natural disasters. There were very severe floods in Europe in their summer. 120 people have died and hundreds more are still missing after the worst flooding in parts of Western Europe for several decades. And there's a very major heat wave in uh, Western North America. Yet another staggering heat wave striking the West. California once again declaring a power grid emergency. We can attribute both of those events to 
uh, human-caused global warming. Our seawater expands as temperatures rise. Glaciers are melting, adding trillions of tonnes of water to our oceans. The sea levels are rising and they don't look like they will stop anytime soon. The unfortunate issue with sea level rise is that even if we were to stop global warming, the sea, sea level would continue to rise for quite a while. And once you kind of, once it gets going, it keeps going for a long time. People's homes are already being hit. And if we keep going at this rate, we can expect to see coastal cities and entire islands underwater. If we're going to kind of prevent um, kind of major flooding of these island nations, these uh, low-lying kind of atoll island nations, and we need to really suppress global warming, even just a bit more sea level rise could um, cause these islands to become uninhabitable. Their survival as a nation depends on it. But moving inland isn't a solution either, because those areas could become drought prone or flood prone or both. We would see climate refugeeism, where people need to move to other parts of the world. But obviously that is a really undesirable outcome. And this is where climate change becomes the climate crisis. We are on track to see that one degree rise at a really rapid pace until it surpasses 1.5 degrees in less than 10 years. We were looking at about three degrees of global warming um, towards the end of the century. That would mean uh, the end of the Great Barrier Reef completely. You know, really uh, deadly heat waves um, around lots of parts of the world. Uh, we would see um, more very heavy rainfall that causes flash flooding. And we would also see more droughts in many parts of the world as well. Even one and a half or two degrees of global warming, which is optimistically where we might be heading, would still be quite bad. It's still worse than where we're at today. Which means if we don't slow down global warming now, we can expect to see extreme devastating disasters sweep across our globe um, because we're still emitting greenhouse gases into the atmosphere, we're still having a warming effect. It's a fairly um, simple equation that if we keep putting carbon in the atmosphere, we keep having a warming effect. Um, we need to actually get to net zero to kind of stop global warming. And uh, we're, we're a very long way off doing that at the moment. This has been the first video in our crash course on climate. I hope you found it interesting or useful and thank you for watching to the end. Dr. Andrew King did touch on this idea of net zero, which is a really important thing to understand in the broader scheme of the climate crisis. So be sure to click that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss the next video, which is all about unpacking what net zero is, how it works and how close we are to achieving it. Thanks again for watching. If you have any thoughts or questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.